before I start, get this image from down below in the information box so you can color along with us. Hi, it's Dia. Today we're going to be coloring the Swan a Swimming, and I'm going to be using Prismacolor colored pencils. And in the past, they have kind of been the bane of my existence a little bit. Everybody raves about them, and I can't quite get the hang of it. So let's see where we go from here. I'm also going to play the music from Swan Lake in the background, also by Tchaikovsky. Now, for this image, I took a lot of very neutral colors. The first one that I used was Ginger Root, and I just made some indications of feathers, little tiny sideways C shapes. And anywhere that I thought that I might see a shadow, I colored very lightly. I mean, I could have left it just white, but I didn't want to. I wanted to make him a little, a little fancier. And he's not exactly a perfect swan. You can see he's kind of stylized. He has fancy feathers. Oh, what's that color? I used a little bit of gray also. That was 20% warm gray. And I also just shaded a little bit and I always start lighter on something. Well, I always start lighter in general, but I started lighter here, especially because I didn't want to screw up white. Once, once I thought I did too much or used the wrong color, it's kind of hard to remove it when you want something to be white unless you're going to paint over it, which I guess is an option, but I didn't want that to happen. So I took another gray, 50% cool gray. Is that the 50%? No, sorry. That's the 20% cool gray. And shaded over the top of the areas that I already colored just to get sort of a neutral, shadowy, a little realistic white feathery look. Tchaikovsky is a Russian composer, and today I thought Swan Lake would be appropriate to play in the background, and I thought I would tell you a little bit about the tragic story of Swan Lake. This happy and exciting song that you hear in the background right now is the story that basically represents Prince Siegfried, who is going out on a hunting trip with his friends. He sees swans on the lake and just as they were about to shoot at the swans, or maybe they did shoot at the swans, some of them fly away and one of them transforms into a beautiful woman right before his eyes. He approaches her because he's confused. And she said, I was put under a spell by an evil baron named Baron von Rothbart. And I've been cursed ever since. She says she was doomed to stay in the shape of a swan until someone swears an oath of undying love and promises to marry her. And this has to be by someone who has never loved anyone before. So the prince is taken by her and he swears his love and promises to be loyal forever. So one day the king has a grand reception at his castle for his son, Prince Siegfried. I don't know if I mentioned that, but that's the prince's name who actually goes to shoot the swans. Suddenly at this lovely reception, there's a, there's a big hubbub and everyone looks up all the eligible ladies that were invited look up and there's a beautiful woman at the door. And the guest is Odette. Somehow Odette is here. So the prince 
walks up to Odette and he greets her and he starts to dance with her and he asks her for his hand, for her hand in marriage. But alas, it was not Odette, it was Odile who had been transformed by her father, the evil Baron von Rothbart, who was the one that originally cursed Odette. So he transformed his daughter into the image of Odette. Odette had seen the whole thing from the ballroom entryway. Odette flees and Prince Siegfried realizes his mistake, so he runs after her, but it's too late. She does forgive him because she truly loves him, but he broke his vow, even though it was accidentally. And they decide that even though they love each other, they, it, it can't be. So they die together and throw themselves into the lake. A very, very sad story for a very beautiful ballet. And what I was doing here was the, the swan's face. I made his face a little bit sort of yellow ochre, just because in every picture and in, and in every real life instance where I've seen a swan, they have this yellow discoloration around their faces. Their bills are very bright and the orangish reddish part kind of goes up into the black part on their on their faces now this color is 20 percent warm gray and i'm just going back in once again and fussing with the Fussing with what would be the white, what would be the feathery look on this one. I've said this before in different videos, but don't feel like you have to pick the same colors that I'm choosing by any stretch. If you want to make the swan more, uh, more in shadow, more in the sunlight, uh, different colors completely, it's completely up to you. So, I, I, obviously the swan is in the water, and I wanted to make it look like there was a reflection of the swan in the water, so she didn't just look like she was sort of sitting on top. So I took what color did I take? Was it ginger root? Hold on, let me check. Yes, I think I took ginger root and I just gave an indication of the swan right underneath. It almost looks like it's in the water. And then I went with one, two, three, four different blue colors, four regular blues and one very, very light blue called sky blue light. And the sky blue light I decided to use as highlights. Uh, there was also another one, um, kind of a greenish gray. It's called gray green light. And all I did was choose areas in the water that were going to be light and choose areas that were going to be dark. And I kind of made it in like a a flowy, almost linear pattern. Not quite lines, but I say linear because it, the shapes wouldn't be vertical. They're in this picture, and most pictures of water, they kind of flow from left to right, or right to left, horizontally. I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing here quite yet, but if there was a light area, I gradually went to a slighter darker blue to even a darker blue. And then every once in a while in the center of that very light area, I would add a very dark blue. And I'll show you what I did at the end. I kind of waited until the end for that. Now, for this pond, 
you could very easily finish it in two minutes. I, of course, fussed around with it because once I start doing it, it's fun. And it's, I probably take longer than I should for a video. So update on the pencils. I still, even right here, I wasn't quite sure <laughs> of how I felt about them. They're very, very creamy to the point where the, 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 the actual points of the pencils uh, diminish very quickly. And it was such a contrast from yesterday because I used Prang and Crayolas and they really don't blend that well. If you want to lay down a color, you have to know what color it's going to be when you put it down because that's it. You're, you're now done. You really can't put that many layers unless you go so, so light, it's almost imperceptible. And they're, they're so light to begin with, meaning the colors, there's not a whole lot of pigment in there. Some of them, but not all of them. And these are almost the opposite end of the spectrum. They're so highly pigmented and so creamy that I ended up realizing a little bit after this part that I really liked using Prismacolors. And I'll tell you why. You can tell the little nuances of all of the colors that you put in. Even after I went over the top of all of this blue and the, the swan color, the ginger root, the dark and the, and the light, and even the medium, which the medium was um, muted turquoise. It, it was, I guess I'm a little excited because I never liked them before. I guess I didn't know how to use them because I had always used polychromos pencils and uh, everyone kept raving about them. So I did end up buying a set for demos and for a review. And even when I first reviewed them, I was kind of back and forth, back and forth. This little tiny picture changed my mind about Prismacolor pencils. Oh, the other reason I didn't buy them is because everybody was saying the quality was so bad and they kept cracking and they're not the same. I don't have, I don't have any other Prismacolors to go by. So I really like these. One last quick fact about Swan Lake. When it was first released and when people first started to go see it, it was not a popular ballet at all, um, which is interesting because now it's one of the most beloved ballets ever written and performed. Oh, now I, I'm taking the darkest blue, which in this set is peacock blue. Not in the whole set, but in the colors that I've chosen for this image is peacock blue. And I just started to go over some of the areas, once again, to give that little pond even more depth. And like I said, you don't have to do it. I just had so much fun doing this picture. Sometimes when I watch videos of people doing art, they work on a picture, and then at the very end, they'll show a snapshot of the image and it looks very much different than what they did or, or what they were showing. Not completely different, but almost like they went in afterwards and touched it up or added things, which is fine. I don't have a, I don't have a complaint about that. I try not to do that just because I want, I want you to be able to see all the things that I do in the image. And I did want it, to, and I'm, I'm telling you this because I added a little bit of that color at the very end for the final final picture at the very end on the on the peaks of the waves I covered the black with this peacock blue so you'll see at the very end thank you for joining me I hope you like these little 
vignettes of the 12 days of Christmas. And please feel free to share if you have family members or a group you want to share it with. It's perfectly okay with me. The, the image is completely free and I hope you're enjoying it. For the rest of the video, I am messing around with the colors on the lake because I have just discovered that I like Prismacolor pencils. Right now, I'm blending with that sky blue light and I can't believe how nice it's blending. Ooh, now I'm also going over certain areas on the swan's back with the yellow ochre because I thought maybe the sun would reflect a little bit, not necessarily reflect, but cast a certain shadow and uh, give it that certain look. Plus it adds dimension. I made the front of the wing the darkest because in all these images so far, the light source is from the left. And now I'm back to the lake again. That is the gray green light. That's a color that I've never seen in any other colored pencil set. I, I also learned, it, it's sort of like a, it's not sea foam green. It's almost like the lightest, not candy mint. I don't even know what this is. It's, it's like no other green that I've ever seen. It's beautiful. I've also learned that I really like blending with the white Prismacolor pencil. I think as much as my old favorite, the Luminance pencil. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do a test. I'm gonna have to compare these Prismacolors to another set. They're gonna be my new fun thing to play with for a while now. The reflection of the swan in the water beneath the swan does not have to be perfect by any stretch. You just have to give an indication that there's something there. And I, well, I learned something doing this too because I used a reference picture for, for the swan and the line beneath the swan where it sits on the water is very distinct. When I drew the image, I kind of had it a little more fluid and it stopped here, it started there, but it's very distinct. So I have to remember that for next time. So, back and forth we go. This was a very limited palette. I had a great time doing it, and I was really glad you joined me. Thank you for joining me on my discovery and my new love of Prismacolor pencils and listening to Tchaikovsky, one of my favorites. So tomorrow, where are we? Let's see. 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping, 10 lords a-leaping, 9 ladies dancing, 8 maids a-milking, 7 sons a-swimming. <gasps> Tomorrow we're doing 6 geese a-laying, and I'm wondering if I shouldn't do golden eggs for the geese. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope you're liking this. Let me know, and let me know if you like ballet at all. I'll talk to you later. Bye.